So hello everyone. Today, as we are continuing our anxiety subject, I will be talking a bit about our five dominant negative emotions. Um, how do they affect us? What do they do to our brain? And how do they store in our body? Today, we will be a bit more focused on how our negative thinkings and negative emotions anchor in our body and create a disease or some sort of disbalance. Um, when we act on our unconscious, when we are not aware of our feelings of um, how we, you know, how we live, how we treat ourselves, when we are not aware how our body reacts on something, then we live on autopilot. That means that we are basically not having control of our own life, not having control of our emotions, of our thoughts, and then when the imbalances in our body starts happening. Physical symptoms are usually very tangible evidence of what's going on deep inside. So whenever you feel some you know, disbalance, some itches, some tensions in your body, in your organs, for sure it is something going on in your emotional parts you know, or your thoughts. Usually um, our body becomes weaker or stronger and that shows you know, what is our mental state. When we feel physically a bit drained or um, super tired or we're not, you know, being ourselves, for sure it comes from our thoughts, emotions, or something that's been going on days on. Um, we have, you know, as you know, brain has left and right hemisphere. The same is going on with our body. The same situation happens in our body. Our left side and our right side are also showing us how our uh, emotions and, and thoughts, um, you know, th circle around. So the left side of our body is kind of connected with the left hemisphere of our brain and it's very receptive one. It's the one that responds on the environment. It's what Eastern, um, cultures would call yin, it's feminine energy, it's more really the receiving one. And, you know, physically it holds our memories, past experiences, our emotional self, joy, um, but also pain. So when you are feeling disorder in, our, in your left side, for example, your, I don't know, um, left hand hurts or um, shoulder or even some organs in your left part of the body, that means that usually either holding memories of sadness or um, guilt or some past experience that are kind of coming out again. The right side on the other side is um, the masculine one. Uh, it's in Eastern cultures, we would call it yang. And that's the organized one. That's the one that moves us forward to the future that's kind of, you know, pushy. It doesn't matter what hand you write on, if you're left or you're right-handed, it doesn't matter. This is like the anatomy co connected with the hemispheres of your brain. And when you are kind of having issues with, with the right side of your body, it means that you, are, you should, you know, question interaction with your external world. Um, you have feeling of being stuck, not being able to move forward, or you're scared of some change that it's coming, you know, that's, that's in front of you, you're aware of it, but subconsciously you feel scared. Um, there is a lot of reluctance. When you're reluctant to something, you will always feel it on the right side of your body. So to talk more a bit about five dominant negative emotions, and you probably know that those are fear, anger, hurt, sadness and guilt. Each one of them, when felt for longer periods of time, definitely cause some sort of disorder or even a disease in your body. So when we start with fear, um, fear is definitely main source of anxiety. When you're scared or even worried, which is the second thing that's connected with anxiety, you will most definitely feel fear. Uh, all of these negative emotions are connected with anxiety and brings anxiety or are a result of anxiety, but fear is definitely the strongest one connected with anxiety. Usually it will affect your kidneys, so if you have kidney stones, uh, adrenal glands of course, because those are you know glands that are responsible for our stress hormones, 
and adrenaline and it has connection with cortisol and everything so whenever we feel very super fatigued and have chronic fatigue or even burnout um, for sure there is unconscious feeling of, of scared of, of fearing something um, very often we're not aware what it is you know it's something dig deep inside of us but if you kind of stop for a second and touch your kidneys or your small intestines as well and then you kind of try to feel what's going on there become aware of your body become aware of you know what are you scared of what are you afraid of kidneys are our energy point you know they are detoxifier of our body next to liver and if you feel drained and super you know super fatigue just put your hands on your kidneys for a few minutes and close your eyes take a deep breath and through your hands your energy will be kind of revitalized so you will feel much better refuel recharged and you can do that a few times per day uh, when we're talking about anger it's usually you know stored in our liver why liver because liver and gall gall gallbladder are your area of solar plexus where all of our anger fear identity issues are stored so liver is definitely one organ connected to anger when you have a long-term anger constant anger like tantrums and everything you know being super nervous and, and angry on someone or around something most probably you will have gallbladder stones or some issues with your that part of your met metabolic system hurt on the other side of course affects our heart so whenever you have issues with cardiovascular system your heart palpitations you just feel kind of tension in your chest then the question is to ask your yourself what is making me sad and if you're aware of it try to let it go um, sadness is on the other side also connected to heart especially long-term sadness but also lungs so very often sadness is one of the negative emotions that we bring to our adult life from childhood when we if we felt neglected from our parents they were absent you didn't feel loved they didn't know how to show you love it doesn't mean that you know they didn't love you they just didn't know how to emotionally express themselves then probably your lungs you will have asthma bronchitis uh, different sort of you know choking in your throat and your lungs not being able to breathe you know with your full full lungs um, and that's something definitely to to solve and to work on meditation kind of helps with all of these issues but also there should be some more deeper um, self um, let's say check to see where it comes from what's the source of your fear anger hurt sadness or guilt guilt on the other side together with shame they kind of come together is the lowest vibration so guilt is let's say the worst of all when you feel guilty it usually comes from the outside world from the external world that doesn't mean that you're guilty about something you did or something that happened but very often it's something that someone else kind of put on us and you know they manipulate with us and they put a lot of guilt or shame on us um, this is the vibration that's definitely putting us down that's not letting us go further go forward grow and definitely among all of them you want to get rid of guilt is the one to start with um, when we are worrying, worry doesn't necessarily comes with five dominant negative emotions, but it's definitely connected because there is no anxious person that's not worrying. Worry is connected to our pancreas, to our spleen. So people who have insulin resistance, diabetes, uh, spleen issues, any sort of you know uh, pancreas issues, it means that you are lacking sweetness of life of course you are you're worrying most of the time you cannot feel happy all the time and you cannot feel that sweetness of your life so anxiety will in general feel like tension in your body but then when you add this additional negative emotions then you can feel it not only in your shoulders and chest which is kind of you know part where we feel stiff and tensed most when we are anxious but it will also be somewhere in your organs 
So anxiety happens when you're not trusting the flow and the direction of your life and the process and then the best cure for all of that is to let them go and to let them go is to be able to receive what life brings to you and be grateful, enjoy your positive emotions like gratitude, happiness, self-love, self-kindness, you know, being kind to yourself, being nice to yourself positive self-talk instead of negative self-talk, um, taking care of ourselves. So this is all for my today's video. See you tomorrow and comment below if you watch this live, live superhero, if you're watching a replay, replay superhero and see you tomorrow.